Hey everybody, thanks for joining me today. We are going to be opening up a 2021 Bowman Mega Box. All right, here we go, right? Looks beautiful. Let me move this sorting tray out of the way. Ah, uh, gosh, I don't remember which box this is. I think this is box number six. It's gotta be box number six. That is my sixth box of Bowman, Bowman Mega. Yeah, I don't, you know, I like the Megas. I really do. Mm. But I kind of wish I had more blaster boxes to open up. Just because I'm kind of seeing, like, I think with blaster boxes, you're seeing more colors and more autographs. Um than you do out of Megas. Uh, Megas are great because you get, you also get 72 cards out of Blasters, right? So you get 72 cards out of Blasters and you only get 60 cards, right? 60 cards out of the Mega Boxes, right? Um, and with the Blasters, you get color parallel cards and box you also get um autographs which is always fun <clears throat> um <coughs> oh, excuse me there um and so the, the other thing that i'm seeing is that these like a mega box is like reselling for like 50 to 55 bucks right and then a blaster is reselling for $45, $40. And you, man, you, the cool thing about opening up a blaster is that you get 70, like I said, you get 72 cards. So you get more chances of hitting first cards and you have way better chance of hitting colors and parallels, right? These four packs in here are not going to give you any colors or parallels, right? You're going to get um, seven to eight paper cards and two to three chrome cards, right? Um, but the cool thing about Megos is that you get these two packs that have five cards in them. And, oh man, this one feels thicker. Oh, yes. Oh, hope it's something amazing. Hope it's something amazing. But yeah, those those mega packs are what everybody wants, right? Because you can get some really cool stuff out of them. So, you know, if you're trying to build up a big collection of paper, then go for the blasters. Because you're also going to get a better chance of getting parallels and autographs as well. Um, you know, if you want the Mega Packs, the Mega Packs have the Mojo um, Chrome cards in there, uh, which look absolutely amazing. So, it's up to you. Whatever you want to do. I think um, I'm going to try to get more Blaster Boxes to open up for this channel, but we'll see what happens, right? We'll see. All right, first card is a Jordan Alvarez, a Jacob the Ground. <clears throat> Mike Clevenger and Matt Chapman, followed by Javier Baez, and our first Chrome is JJ Blade, who is doing really well for the Marlins right now. He's doing pretty good in the minor league system. I think he's only like in Double A, but still, it's a nice card to get. Nolan Gorman, who I'm not too sure how he's doing. I'm not sure how Nolan is doing. But I do know that JJ Blood A is doing pretty well. Marlins, they have pitching. They just need to develop some bats, right? And then they'll be all set. We got Oswald Peraza. Ooh, followed by Julio Rodriguez. That's awesome. I will sleeve up Julio. The new MLB. Um, Top 100 prospects list just came out, and um, 
Julio's in the top 10 there. And uh, Miguel Amaya for the Chicago Cubs. He's also in the top 100. Um, Amaya, I think Amaya is going to come up in the next... Um, he's not going to come up this year. He'll probably come up late next year. And then he should be up the following year. So he should be... We, we might see him in the 22 season. And he for sure should be up in the 23 season. Um, and I think however well he does is going to going to determine the fate of uh, Wilson Contreras. Um, I would love to keep Contreras. <clears throat> you know, he's got av he's pretty average... Hits 20 home runs a year. Awesome defensive guy. A great asset to our young pitching core right now. Um, and you kind of need that experience. You know, you need that help as a pitcher. Um, with a veteran a catcher, you know. And so we'll see. Depending how Miguel Amaya does. I mean, there's always a chance where, you know, we give Wilson a little more rest. Um, the DH should be coming to the National League by then. And so we can always have Amaya and um, um, Contreras switch off, which, which would be amazing. But I don't think we're going to be offering, at the rate that Amaya's um, growing, I don't know if we're going to give Contreras a big contract. I just don't know if we're going to give him, like, if we give him a four-year contract, I'll be... I'll be kind of surprised. If we give him a three-year contract, I think that's a great fit for him. But we'll see. Um, we'll see what happens. All right, let's see what we got. We got Xander Bogarts, Goldschmidt, Josh Bell, who is now part of the um, Washington Nationals, Mookie Betts, who I think is currently injured, Alex Bregman, who I don't care about, and our first Chrome is the pitcher, and it's Nick Lodolo. Lodolo is doing pretty good um, right now in the minor league system. Let's take a little look. Let's take a little look at Lodolo here. Number fifty nine overall prospect. Man, those are pretty good numbers as well. So very nice. And then we've got a Anthony Volpe. Or Volpe. But I'm going to say Volpe. We'll say Volpe for now. Right? And a Yankee prospect is always... I don't know. <laughs> a Yankee prospect is always worth like 25 cents. Because they're the Yankees. And you never know how... How they're going to pan out. But I mean Yankees fans are everywhere. And they're willing to pay money for cards here. We got Brandon Shoemaker who's actually doing pretty well. Followed by Jordan Groshans. I might start PCing Jordan Groshans. I might go and buy some of his first cards. But he's a guy that I think um, has got a lot of potential. And we got a Jeremy De La Rosa as our first here. So Groshans is actually the 43rd overall prospect. You know, and the way, um, you know, Boba Shett, he's got, he's got, his defense isn't that amazing. I was hoping that he would he could use like his natural speed and quickness to kind of um, be a, a better defensive guy. But I mean, he's he's struggling a little bit, you know, playing defense. And um, you know, I think it's only going to get harder once they start playing more in um, Toronto as well. Which they are. Actually, you know what? Last week, I think the Blue Jays played their first game um, back at home in Toronto. Um, and so that infield is pretty fast. And so, yeah, he's going to have to uh, pick up his defense or else um, Groshans is going to come in, you know? I mean, they already traded um, Austin Martin, who I think was a shortstop or center slash center fielder. And so... Um, what's his name? I know Kevin Biggio is not doing that great. So, 
I don't know, maybe they just kind of make Biggio a, a bench player. Um, and, yeah. They've got good problems to have, in my opinion. Right? Who's to say what's the best decision here? Because that's, that's tough to do. So we got a Jose Abreu, Fernando Tatis for the personal collection here. We got a Rendon. Ooh, Ryan Mountcastle. Very nice. All right, and we got a Christian Javier who's also doing pretty well. Or he was, I think he's struggling at the moment, but. Um, He's not doing too bad either. And we got a Jeter Downs. And Jeter Downs, I think from what I've heard, he's doing actually pretty well um, in the minors. So, number 41 overall prospect. All right, he's got some power. That's always good to see. 24 home runs. All right, and then we've got a Freddy Zamora. Here and Freddie's interesting because the Brewers. Oh yeah, that's what I thought. He didn't play last year. Um, but yeah, he's the Brewers overall number eleven and the number seventy-four overall prospect. So I mean, he's got he's got potential. Let's see what he can do. We got Nolan Jones. Nolan Jones, did he get called up? I'm trying to remember. I don't think it was this guy. I don't think he's 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 been called up yet. But I could be wrong. No, no, probably not. Gunnar Henderson, awesome name there. And Michael Toglia. Very nice. Let's open up this one. Ooh, and I'm excited. I wonder what that thicker card is. I hope it's like Austin Martin or if it's like a Wander Franco autograph, I'll take that. Braylon Marquez, he's in the top 100 prospects list as well for the Cubbies. Interesting. They put a rookie card right on top there. We have Shohei for the PC. Charlie Blackman. Brian Anderson. Bryce Harper and our first chrome is Jeremy Pena of the Houston Astros, followed by Hunter Bishop. I've been hearing a little bit about Hunter Bishop too. I think he's doing pretty well in the minors. Right? He's actually the Giants' number four prospect, which is always good. Giants, the Giants system is always pretty decent. All right. <clears throat> We got JJ Blade again. Brett Brett Beatty. I've been hearing his name a lot. <clears throat> he's doing pretty well in the minors as well. Doesn't show here, but I think he's been doing pretty well this year. And a Daniel Lynch. Now, we got good stuff here. We've got the Mojo packs here. You know, open it like this. Yeah, it's on. I don't spoil who the back is. All right. So we've got, okay, five cards. We had an insert as well. Simeon Woods Richardson. All right. Yeah, this guy got traded to, he got traded to um, the Twins. And, yeah, this guy's got a lot of potential. Um, and he's just got a. Figure out a couple things, and I think he can be a solid. <clears throat> I think he's ready to play this year. Um, I think he might be pitching for the Twins this year already. Um, but for sure, he'll be ready for next year if he isn't pitching already. And I think this guy, um, he's going to be a solid. I think next year he's going to be a solid number four, number five pitcher. And he's got the potential to get better. You know, the Twins do... <clears throat> They do have a knack for kind of developing their pitchers. And so hopefully that helps him out. Um, so Simeon Woods, 
man, we've only received, we've only opened up one first so far. But I'm going to put Simeon Woods right here. And we got a Matthew Thompson. Very nice. Man. Holy cow, the White Sox are just loaded. He's their number seven prospect. Man. That's really cool. And then we've got a Bobby Dahlbeck in the back here. Man, the... <clears throat> it's funny, man. The, uh... What am I trying to say? The, the uh, AL... The AL East. Sorry. Yeah, the AL East is so interesting. Like, I just think that the... Oh, Geraldo Perdomo followed by, uh... I'm behind Bobby here. So yeah, let me talk about the uh let me talk about the AL East first. Um it's super interesting because uh the Blue Jays they got um they got a pitcher, they got Barreos, who's super solid, and who else did they get in that trade? Did they get a position player too? I think they got some other stuff from that trade too, but I don't remember. But yeah, the I mean the the Blue Jays made some moves, and the Yankees made some great moves. I think like everyone was thinking, oh yeah, Rizzo is gonna go back to Boston, right? He's gonna go to Boston, and he's gonna do awesome there. He's a former Boston guy, um, or or former Red Sox, right? And then I don't know where the Yankees come and swoop him out of there, and then. The Red Sox have to go get Kyle Schwarber, who's, I think he's still injured, but I think Schwarber's going to come, I think he'll be ready in a couple weeks. So they traded, the Red Sox were then forced to trade for an injured player. And so, like, the and then the, the Yankees, like, went on this crazy win streak. <clears throat> and then all of a sudden, the Yankees hit these injuries, and, like, now Rizzo has COVID. Uh, I think he just got covid earlier this week today's tonight's Wednesday so I think he got it like Monday or something like that which sucks for him because he's not vaccinated because he used to have cancer he had cancer and because of that his immune system is compromised and so that's why he's that's why he's not vaccinated because he's afraid there hasn't been enough studies with the vaccination and people who have had cancer what, what are the side effects and stuff so he didn't He's, he's unvaccinated, and then now he's got COVID, which totally sucks because he's already kind of like semi-immunocompromised so because of, of cancer. But, but yeah, I mean, Boston's just... And now Boston's got an opportunity to, to, to make a surge here, but we'll see what they do. Geraldo Perdomo followed by ooh, Jeter Downs. Not too bad. All right. Oh, man. And then we've got that last pack here. And I swear it feels thicker. I mean, let's see what happens here. Oh, yeah. Definitely. It definitely feels thicker. Let's um, carefully open it. Let's not try to spoil it like I normally do. <clears throat> oh. Did we get six cards? We did get six cards. And that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, we, we got seven cards. Oh, yeah. Okay. I don't think we got an auto, but we did get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. That's hilarious. Matthew Thompson. Followed by, ooh, Gabriel Reyes. All right. <coughs> I'm always excited to get um, an Indian's first card. Um, just because. Just because. The Indians, um, they know how to develop players. It's followed by a Bayron Laura. So let me see. I'll bring down Simeon and Miguel here. I'll put Gabriel right there. And then we got Baron Laura, followed by, oh, Corbin Carroll. Oh, wait. 
Do I have so many Corbin Carroll cards? Oh, that is nice. Number 42 out of 50. So this is like a gold parallel. That's nice. Gold is always awesome. Gold and yellow, I believe. So this is a gold parallel of Corbin Carroll. Um, that's super nice. Super excited about that. Followed by Spencer Torkelson. Spencer is always a... Spencer Torkelson is going to be a really good player as well. Yeah, but this is super nice. Let's look at... You can see how this one's got gold in the back. And it's numbered to 50 right there. 42 out of 50. That's nice. Okay. But yeah, I, I, I literally have so many of these Corbin Carroll Futurist cards. You guys, give me a second. I'm going to go find out how many I <laughs> have. Um, there we go. That's nice. Um, I think I'll move Julio here. All right, let me let me let me go see. I'm gonna pull out how many. I have them right here. I think. <coughs> okay, you know what? I, was, I lied. I don't have them here with me. Within arm's reach. But yeah, Corbin Carroll, very nice card. Spencer Torkelson, this guy. I'm hoping he gets called up. Hopefully he gets called up. Um, yeah, she get called up in a few weeks here. This guy's going to be a stud. Put my two cards down. Yeah, that's funny. That pack had seven cards in it. That's so interesting. Um, I'll put it over here. And then we got a Garrett Mitchell. Garrett Mitchell, super solid, followed by Marco Luciano. Very nice. Two very good players here. Garrett Mitchell is the Brewers' number one prospect. And he should get called up. He should get called up because the Brewers need all the offensive help that they can get right now if they want to make a nice long run here. Um... So I think, yeah, he fell down to the 20th pick because I think he had some health issues. I think, like, I forget, like, he had, like, diabetes or something like that. He's, I want to say it's diabetes. And so he kind of just fell down lower and lower in the draft. And then the Brewers picked him up, which was, you know, that's great. Great for the Brewers, right? Okay, here, and last but not least, Marco Luciano. Luciano has been doing so good. I mean, dude, 302, 14th overall prospect. He's a shortstop, too, so, I mean, hopefully he gets called up as well. I would love to see him play and play some baseball in September here. So, yeah. Dude, very nice box here. Very nice box. I didn't get a lot of firsts. Um... But man, that last pack of cards. Holy cow. Put Garrett back there. I think I only got two firsts. Let me skim through these real quick. Yeah, I only got two first cards. Which is below average. Yep, below average here. My two firsts. All right. But, um... You know, the cards that kind of really did it was getting this gold um, parallel of Corbin Carroll as a futurist card. I don't know much about Corbin Carroll. I don't know much about the D-backs, but I know the D-backs, their system's probably pretty loaded. Yeah, above 400 OBP, that's always nice. Um, 18 for 19 on steals and his... Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Speed is always good. Ability to get on base is good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, he's uh, he's 5'10". He's only 165 pounds, man. Dude, that guy's going to fill out. If you're... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he'll probably gain, like, another, like, 15 pounds of muscle, at least. 15, 20 pounds of muscle. And, yeah, dude, hopefully he can 
do really well because I mean these cards that are only numbered to 50 man they they're worth they're worth some money so yeah I mean can't complain got my Julio um, Rodriguez over here got a couple firsts you know and Got some decent rookies, and dude, I got a Spencer Torkelson. Luciano's gonna be awesome. I PC him. Gary Mitchell's gonna be awesome. I PC him. Yeah, Torkelson's gonna be awesome. I PC him. Uh, Corbin Carroll, I'm gonna do a little more research about you now. Now that I've got a card of yours numbered 50. Um, and so, yeah, you know, not too bad. Not too bad for, I think I paid 50 bucks for this box. So, not too bad. I think it was worth. I think I got about fifty dollars worth of cards here, and once I get them graded, and and so I'll be able to make my money back from from this box here, from these cards here. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day and a great rest of your week. If you're watching this on on um, Saturday or Sunday, I hope. Your upcoming week is just amazing. And uh, just want to thank you guys again for watching this. And for listening to me just kind of ramble about baseball and the cards I got. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care.